Good morning. Is God real? Can you, can you hear Him? What is He about? What is this all about? What is this life about? The only thing this life is about is about you and the choices you make in this lifetime that will affect you for the rest of your life. And for all eternity, it will affect your life. You see, Jesus, whether you accept it or not, is real. And He left this earth with the view of you in his mind. And he said, I have saved the world, but the world has rejected me. In Matthew 25, it reads like this. In verse 40, the king will answer them. I can guarantee you this truth. Whatever you did for one of my brothers and sisters, no, how, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. Then the king will say to those on the left, go away from me. God has cursed you. Go into everlasting fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry. And you gave me nothing to eat. Thirsty. And you gave me nothing to drink. What does that mean? It means this. You are your brother's keeper. My life is a reflection of what I see in the word of God. It is what I see in this word. And how I interpret it. And allow the Holy Spirit to interpret it in my heart. And if I allow the Holy Spirit to interpret it correctly. Then I've got to be doing something right. Why are so many things going so wrong in this world? Marriages are breaking up left, right and center. Simply this. You're doing something wrong. Somewhere along the line, you're doing something wrong. Because my Bible says I cannot serve two masters. I either serve one or serve the other. The Bible says that a marriage is something ordained, created, and made by God. And if I do it right, it will last. If I do it wrong, it will not survive. I'm speaking to you about the miracles of God. They are all around about you. They're in your life. They're around your life. They're a testimony that God is alive and God is real. Let me teach you something about a marriage. And about following God. And obeying the voice of God. Jesus said you put your hand to the plow. Don't let go of it. And Jesus said, unless you've walked in another man's footsteps, don't criticize him. So I don't criticize you. I don't criticize you for your choices. But I can only share with you my testimony and how God has allowed me to walk my life. And how he's taken me from one end to the other. There is much of my life left unsaid. Much of it that goes left unsaid. But one part of it is this. God sends you your partner. God sent you that man. God sent you that woman. And God expects you to make the right choices. And if you make the right choices, He will do the right thing. 
I met a young lady and fell in love. And God led me to her and led her to me. And God said this, now you put into practice all that I have taught you. All that I have taught you. There was not one night, not one night, that we went to bed angry or upset. But every night we would ask God forgiveness. Every night we would go before God, before parting, and pray. And if I hurt her, upset her, I would go on my knees and say sorry. Let's try again. Let's do it God's way. One day she came to me and she said to me, Lovey, me and a couple of the girls need to go down to the coast on, on a working holiday. And within my spirit, something wasn't right. Something wasn't right. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And I said to her, no. You're not going this weekend. And then the following week came and she asked me the same question. And the same thing plagued me. There was something not in place. I couldn't put my finger on it. But I knew something wasn't right. And this went on for a number of weeks. And eventually I thought to myself, you know what? You... This is not a dictatorship. This is a partnership. I'm a partner with her. And I need to give her her freedom. I don't want to withhold her. And I said to her, you know what? You can go. And before she left, she came round and woke me up for one evening. And said to me, honey, I want what you got inside of you. I don't want no preacher to preach for me. I want no preacher to pray for me. But I want you to lead me to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want what you got inside of you. And I led her to the Lord Jesus Christ. And she gave her heart to the Lord. And that weekend... As they went down to the coast, I had a dream. And in my dream, the Lord said to me this, Meet her halfway when she comes home. Go and fetch her and bring her home. And I woke up and the first thing I thought was, You know what? Put this behind you. This is your imagination. This is not from the Lord. It's imagination. And I let her go. I had the dream three times. And on Sunday she was coming home. She phoned me from the halfway mark. And she said this. I'm excited to be coming home. I've missed you. And I just want you to know that I love you. I love you. And I went back to sleep. Fifteen minutes later, I was startled away. Bang! And I got up. And in my heart, my heart stopped. Because I knew something was going on. And I picked up the phone and I phoned her. And I couldn't reach her cell. And I knew something was wrong. Something was wrong. And I tried three times and I couldn't get through. And then I phoned her captain at headquarters. And the first thing he said to me was, Kevin, how did you know? 
And I said to him like this, No what? He said, She's been killed in an accident. My world tumbled right there and then. Caved in on me. You think a man has not got a breaking point? And a woman hasn't got a breaking point? God created this body. And each one of you have a breaking point. And that was my breaking point. And I just broke. And I wanted to get in my car and race down. And he said to me, it's no good you're going. They are using shovels to pick up the pieces. You see, the car went under the truck as the truck driver fell asleep and dragged them for 400 meters. There was nothing left. There was nothing left. And my first reaction like the reaction of many was to get up and say, God, why? Why? Why did you take her from me? Why did you cause her death? Let me tell you, God's not to blame. I didn't listen and I wasn't obedient enough to hear his voice. Clear enough. Because I was backslidden, down in the gutters. But even down there, He will still reach down to you and protect you and guide you. Weeks after that, it wasn't weeks, it was a few days after that. Every night, I would go out and drink myself to a stupor, come home. Some nights not even knowing how I got home. Waking up the next day not knowing how I got there. But God, but God. As I stood over her grave, and once everybody had gone, I stood there and looked up into the heaven above, and I said, God, Forgive me. Forgive me. You're still my God. And Lord, you're still my Savior. And Holy Spirit, you're still my guide. That night I went to back to my house. Went to bed. And I was awoken in the early hours in the morning. And I got up and I sat up and I looked around. And there she stood in front of me. And she said to me, Kevin, I want to thank you for the greatest gift that any man could have given me. She said, now you get on with your life and come back to the Lord. He's given you another chance. And he, she said this. You will meet a lady. God is sending you somebody. Special. And I had a dream. And I saw this woman. I saw her age. And the next, when I woke up, I was laughing. And I said, Lord... You giving me this, which I have seen in the dream? I'm not laughing at you, but I'm laughing because you are so loving and so merciful. My dead fiancé's dad phoned me and said to me, Son, and crying on the phone, I said, Dad, how do I know, how do I know that she's in the arms of my loving Savior? And he said this, listen my son, 
God is going to send you a woman and you're going to meet her in December. And he said, you know, my daughter, I'm going to see her. One of these days I will see her. And he said, she asked me to lead her to the Lord Jesus Christ. And she gave her heart to God just days prior to her being killed. Do you think this doesn't work? Let me tell you, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. That December, I met my wife. And the dreams that God gave me as a young man came to pass. As my son was born, as my daughter was born, and as my youngest was born, God had showed me three children, three children, in this nest that He had made for me. And He fulfilled it, the ages exactly as He showed, the age of my wife exactly as He said. We went through many turbulent times, many times that we should have got a divorce, many times that we should have stayed separated. But God brought us together. At one stage in my life, God said, if you don't get this woman back right now, you are going to lose her. The sins of your past, God can forgive. God will restore you. He will restore your marriage. He will restore your family. But you've got to give it all to Him. You've got to give it all to Him. Today I'm the happiest man because I obey God. I'm not doing it my way. I'm doing it God's way. And I'm getting the results that God said I would. If you sow the right seed and you plant the right seed, you will reap the harvest of your prayers and of your sowing. You think miracles don't happen? They happen all the time round about you. But God wants you to know that He's coming to get you. I have a family. I have brothers and sisters. Some are saved, some are not. One day they grabbed my brother. They tied his hands up behind his back. And they shot him behind the ear. And the bullet went traveling through the brain, ricocheted off the side of his skull and came out his eye. You think miracles don't happen? As he went into hospital, the neurosurgeons gave him a 2% chance or a 4% chance of just making it through the night. And as the family gathered together and prayed and prayed, let me tell you something. I fell before God Almighty and I said to him, Lord, you I know. You I know. But my brother doesn't know. Here's my life. Take it. Take it. But let him live. Take my life. But let him live. Four days later, my brother walked out of that hospital. No brain damage. Completely healed. A little bit of muscle injury on the side. Not functioning as it should because of nerve damage. But 100% healed. 
And I said, you know what? God's given you a second chance. He's given you a second chance. And he refused. He refused to bow his knee. I weep because it's his choice. I cannot force it upon him. It's his choice to make. My other brother got so down deep into, into devil worship and, and drugs and things like that. And one day in the hospital, I said to him, do you know that there's a devil? And he said, yes. And I said, you can't have a devil without a God. You can't have a devil without a God. Today he walks with God. Free from drugs. That is the power of prayer. That is the power of the anointing of the blood of the Lamb. That is the power that we walk with. And then we abuse it. And then we go to fall on our knees over and over and over. And say, Lord, forgive me, teach me. I don't want to be taught by men. I want to be taught by God. Because men misrepresent God. They've made Him this vicious retribution. This God that wields a whip. They forget about the grace and the love of God. The mercy of God. You see, each one of us got to God through His grace, through His mercy, through His patience. Every time I faulted, every time I fell, every time I slipped back, there was only one person that was there for me. Only one person. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And He would come back and say, Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's go. Pick me up and let me on. Nothing happens by chance. Only God restores. Only God heals. Only God anoints. Only God saves and sets free. You see, my brother, when the gang broke into his home, there were so many miracles that happened in one night. They chased after his wife as she ran through the home and she locked herself in the bathroom. And you tell me that four big men cannot break down a bathroom door. They couldn't get past that door. They couldn't get it open. Because had they got it open, they would have tied her up. They would have raped her. And my brother would have been dead. And just then the alarm went off. And they ran. And she was able to get to a telephone and phone for the ambulance. Miracles all the time through. All the way through. You see, I choose who I serve. And I want to choose the right choice. I know that you want to choose the right one. But there's so many, so many preaching and teaching wrong things. People are sick and tired of religion. They're sick and tired of it. They're sick and tired of watching a man behind a pulpit preach one thing and then be molesting young children behind closed doors. They're sick and tired of it. And the Satanists are getting out ahead. You know why? Because as a child of God, you're not asked to compromise. You're not asked to compromise. You're asked to overcome. 
through prayer and fasting. If I have prayed 30 days, 40 days praying and fasting, not once, not twice, a number of times, and I'll keep at it. Every time I need an answer, I'll go back and find the right answer. Because I will not preach the lies. I am a soldier of a great God. And I have the scars. God doesn't move, remove the scars of your life. He leaves the scars there as proof and as evidence that He's alive and He's well. This body was set alight by petrol. From, from my right, from my waist, all the way up. A ball of flames. I got the scars to prove it. And only one saved me. God Himself. You go into a panic. It burnt all my clothes off. And then all of a sudden I threw myself on the ground. And I rolled over and over, and the flames were distinguished. I went out one night on a motorbike, and the Holy Spirit said, don't go tonight. And I pushed to the side and said, you know what? It's my imagination. It's my imagination. Not ten minutes later, I was in a hospital. Should have been dead. Should have been dead. I went off the side of a cliff. Hung on the edge of a cliff. God saved me. God saved me. I've had people hunt my life down. And God saved me. Why? For what reason, my Lord? But to be a testimony. But to be a testimony. The Lord showed me. The passing of my mother. And when I told the rest of the family. God is giving us a year. They said who are you. To say things like that. You see God gave me the time to spend with her. The last days. I spent with her. The happiest days of my life. Because I could say, look into her eyes one day. And say to mom you know you're going to the right place. You know I'm going to see you again. But I love you. I love you for everything you've done in my life. For all the rights you've done. Because I don't remember the wrongs. Because she's my mother. I was in a bed paralyzed from neck down. In the beginning, begging doctors to fix me up, begging them, begging them each day, just operate, just operate. And because of greed, because of greed, they refused. I approached governments and I wrote to them and I told them what's happening. That millions and millions are being stolen from the coffers of the government and they can't prove it but God brings out the truth you think God cannot see you think God is blind he only wants the person to say father here am I use me and then he will be the voice that comes through you think I'm crazy? You think I'm crazy? I wrote to the government and I told the Prime Minister. I said to him, listen, Mr. Prime Minister, this is what's going on. Save my life. And when he didn't do it, the Holy Spirit said to me, write to him and tell him he's going to be losing his office. And I wrote to him and said to him, God says, and I'm sure they laughed. I'm sure they laughed. 
But four weeks later, the man was out of office. And then I wrote to the human rights, and I wrote to the government, the health minister, and I said, Mr. Minister, Mrs. Minister, this is what's happening. And I'm sure she laughed. And I wrote back to her, and I said to her, this is what God says. I put you in that position. And if you misuse it and abuse it, I will take you out. I'm sure they laughed. And thought I was a mockery and thought I was insane. But let me tell you something. Four years later, the entire cabinet was gone. Just as God said so. You see, I lay for seven and a half years on a bed, unable to move, slowly being poisoned to death. You think God cannot reach down and heal a man that has laid down his life to his creator? Let me tell you something. The reason why I am able to stand here today with hands lifted up to a holy and righteous God, is because God reached down and said, I will heal you. And he flew me over 10,000 kilometers away to get healed. And what they would not do in seven and a half years, God did in one week. In one week, I was able to walk back laughing, with the joy in my heart that God has set me free. Seven and a half years. You think God is blind? Let me tell you something. How does God do it? All He does is take His hands off because of your choice. When your greed becomes so great that you would rather grab 35 euro than save a man's life, then let me tell you something. You're trading on dangerous ground. Dangerous ground. Let me tell you this. God leaves no question marks behind. No doubts, no lies, only the truth. And the truth is out there. Every single bit of it. Let me tell you, over the seven and a half year period, seven and a half years, that doctors prescribe drugs, The amount that I consumed because of doctors' greed for money, for their greed for 35 euro a month that they could get on my life from the government. That 35 euro means nothing. What miracles God did means everything. 